فإذا أحبك الله فيكون ماذا؟ قال الله تبارك فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبطش بها ورجله التي يمشي بها السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان مبارك We know Ramadan is actually going to be tomorrow So today is Sunday and tonight is the first night of Taraweeh Alright, this one looks good. So, let me actually start with a reminder. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدَى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ That Allah Azza wa Jal has sent down the Quran in the month of Ramadan. And of course, we know, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ That Allah Azza wa Jal has sent down the Quran in the Laylat al-Qadr, which is the night of decree, which is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan on the odd nights, so 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, or 29th, it could be any of these nights. So when it comes to the Salaf of Salih, if you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then you look at the Sahabas, and then you look at the Tabi'een, the Adba'u Tabi'een, as of course the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ That the best of people are my people, as in the Sahabas that are around him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then the Tabi'een, those who come after them, and then those who come after them. If you look at their lives, you will see that in the month of Ramadan, they used to let go of all of the books they used to do, Aqidah, Fiqh, Hadith, uh, Sira, all of these books that they used to do, they keep it to a side, and what they do is they solely concentrate on the Quran. So all of these Islamic books that you guys see from, actually, you know what, I'm going to give you guys a breakdown, hopefully today once I come back from Taraweeh, inshallah. So the books that I'm going to be completely focusing on for the next 30 days, of course, Ya Ayyuhal Nas, Qad Ja'atkum Maw'idatum Mi Rabbikum, the Quran, which of course is our primary source where we get every information, and of course the hadith of the Prophet. Though I will be taking a break on my hadith memorization uh, and just focus on revision. And of course, the Quran is something you should be reading every single day. Many of the Muslims, unfortunately, they only pick up the Quran when it comes to the month of Ramadan. But the Quran is something that should be a part of you. You shouldn't be spending a single day in your life except for the Quran. Is something that you spend time with. You read it, you listen to it, you apply it in your life. Of course, as the Prophet ﷺ, when Aisha radiallahu anha, she described the character of the Prophet ﷺ, she said, Quran. He's like a walking, talking Quran. His character was the Quran. So, of course, learn the Quran, read it, and on Yawm al-Qiyamah, it's going to be said, Read, recite, and rise, just like you recite in this dunya. Just like you used to recite in this dunya, you're going to be told to read, recite, and you're going to be rising. And the more Quran you know, the more you've applied it in your life, the more you memorize it, the more you convey it. Allah Azza wa Jal, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُدِعُ أَجَرُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal is not going to let go of your good deeds and make it go to waste. Allah Azza wa Jal is going to accept it from you if you're sincere. So the Quran, of course, we should be we should be spending time with the Quran every single day. Anyway, for Ramadan specifically, many of the Salaf al as you can see, they used to recite the Quran all day long. And of course, uh, some of the previous scholars, such as Imam al-Shafari, used to recite the entire Quran twice every single day in Ramadan. So it's 30 days of Ramadan, 60 times he recited the entire Quran. And of course, uh, one of the most important books that I want to go over is Tafsir al-Sadi. And I just want to completely memorize this book. Alhamdulillah, I've completed my hefs. So, um... This one is solely for just 28, 29, 30. So solely I'm focusing on this tafsir of Asabi so that I can properly go over the book and of course go over the Quran and a um, little bit of tafsir here and there. But other than that, this month is just Quran, Ibadah, Quran. And as I said, the scholars of the past, they used to literally, a lot of them, they used to stop doing lessons. They used to stop the durus and they literally used to lock themselves in the house and read the Quran. This is the month of Ibadah. And of course, teach people and uh, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi says, convey for me even if it's a single verse. So of course do that, but remember your main priority this Ramadan, just like all of the scholars of the past used to do, is spend time with the Quran and apply it to your daily life. Getting ready to link up with the boys. This brother lives across my house and I see him only once a year in Ramadan. Yes. Yes. Hey, people bro. What? I didn't know. So it's getting packed, but uh, actually it's more packed because the downstairs area is now done. Nah, 4K60 is too much, bro. Keep anything on my phone. Do you want to see what I have on my phone? I don't keep anything on my phone. Apart from videos, after I record this and I upload it and I edit it, bro, I'm going to delete this. Alright guys, so in Ramadan we always go to the stalls, but today is the first night, so there is no stalls. Damn, this place is closed. 
Everything's closed today, bro. This one was a drop house, yeah? Oh, yeah! Tora, out of 10. 7 out of 10. Hey, stop finishing my story. You look like gangsters. That's why he doesn't want to stay here. He's affected by this guy. I've been affected oh, so it's, by this it's guy. It's his fault. It's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Adrian, no, no, no. This was Adrian's first uh, Tarawi. How was your Tarawi? Yeah, How's your feeling? Like it's oh, very good. Your brother, brother, brother. Well, I shared it with. No, no, brother. Hi, my brother. You're coming to join us. Is it? I've never seen it. I was just watching. Yes. So, what, what are you guys doing? Oh, nothing. We're just, I thought you were filming like a video. <laughs> like no, no, no. We're just hanging out. out and yeah. this is for my YouTube channel. Okay, what's the YouTube channel for? Uh, it's uh, I just do random vlogs. Okay, are you famous? Uh, I've got 20,000 subscribers. So, you said I'm not? Uh, it doesn't mean I don't have Instagram followers yet. I don't have any Instagram followers yet. Uh, 50,000, but it doesn't mean well, anything. No, yeah, I mean, look, he's being so it's, humble. No, numbers don't mean anything, it's the content that you okay, make. Well, Some the content, people have uh, over a million subscribers yeah, yeah. and they're not bringing any benefit that's, to the world. That's true, but you are. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here listening, so. I'm here listening, so I'm just gonna watch. Alright, I mean, we're oh, not no, really. Australia. <laughs> <on. laughs> oh, really? Where is Australia? Uh, Sydney. Oh, nice. Do you want to be in the vlog? You okay with it? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, yeah. Absolutely. You just move it. Are you from Bangladesh? Mm-hmm. Back home? Whereabouts? Um, Dhaka, which is like the main city. Okay. I stayed a few weeks in Dalmondi. Is it Dalmondi? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, my, my wife's from Bangladesh. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. She's a... Uh, Are you some sort of uh, travel YouTuber guy? No, no, no. If you travel, I've, you... I've been, to, I've been to 100 countries. But oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I spent a month in Bangladesh. It's amazing. Yeah. So, so you're Muslim, yeah? I, I'm a Reba, yeah. Oh, he's a river as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a medical student, medical student, like computer science students. Okay, so we're all basically uni students. Fun time in life. It's like yeah, one. we've I've known these guys for years, but funnily enough, we only meet literally once a year. Literally, Ramadan. Uh, after Ramadan, Where do you like, live? we all live next to each other. What? Like one to three. Oh, literally, what right? kids do you have? No kids, no. Okay, no. Yeah. We're not, we're not. I mean, I'm just not about one day, one day. Now you're just balancing work and study. That's it. You're right, you're right, yeah. actually, yeah. I'm balancing friend time. Of course. Yeah. What's yeah. your name? Look at your name. Uh, Ray. Nice to meet you, Abu. Nice bumpy is a blessing from Allah to bump into Ray, man. Literally, you're the first, the first person I've subscribed. <laughs> you see my name? Have a nice day, Ray. I can't lie, I think we need to go, he's getting cold. I say. Alright, so we're back, guys. I can't lie, I'm not used to um, going to sleep at like 12 the past few months. Because the Aisha is like late as 7.30. I end up literally going to sleep 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m., but by 9 p.m., usually most days I'm asleep. So today, 12, midnight, and then having to wake up at like 3.30 slash 4 to eat, pray, go to the mission, come back after Fajr and get like a two-hour nap. My body's not used to it. Guys, I did say that I was going to go over all of my books. So these are the Islamic books that I have. Here are my non-Islamic books, which, you know what, let me get them out. Oops. So let's start with the Islamic books because they are the most important ones. Oh, they're very heavy and pretty big. All right, let me just go over them randomly. Let's start off. So, of course, we've got the Quran, but uh, this is extremely basic. Only reason I'm showing this is because um, there's a lot of non-Muslims watching my channel. Uh, so, it would be good to educate them. So, this is our primary source, the Quran that Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu through the angel uh, Jibrail or Gabriel. And uh, it hasn't been changed in 1,400 years. No one has ever changed the Quran. It's been exactly the same uh, compared to if you check all the other books, the Bibles and other books that have been changed, but the Quran has never been changed. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu la hafidhun. That Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that sent down the Quran and Allah Azza wa Jal is going to protect it. And how does Allah Azza wa Jal protect it? Is by its people because us Muslims, we we memorize the entire Quran. There are some rough estimates that will show you that there is about roughly 10 million people who have memorized the entire Quran from page one all the way to the end. As you can see, it's roughly 600 pages. 
So, uh, then the books that I went through is, uh, this is the summarized version of Bukhari. This is a book that I started reading and completed in the summer holidays when I was, I think, 15, 16 years old uh, during my GCSEs. I remember after my GCSEs, I had a long three months holiday and that's when I used it. Um, so that's when I properly started to actually, actually seek proper knowledge. Uh, before that, I have completed my hefs at the age of 14, but I will be honest, my hefs wasn't the strongest, so it was something that I was working on at that time. So at 14, I've completed my hefs. At 16 is when I properly, properly started to do books. Now, personally, I'm always, I've always really been like a video type of guy so I like to you know just watch videos more than read books uh, but from the age of 16 I started to kind of force myself to start to read books because they are way better and that's their primary source of course we got Sahih Muslim uh, again these are the summarized versions so I think this one's got 2,230 hadith, uh, Bukhari, the summarized version, um, here as well in Sahih Muslim. I don't have the entire set. I'm not on that level where they've got books upon books upon books upon books uh, with 7,000 plus hadith in Bukhari and uh, all of that. No, uh, none of that. So um, I'm still a uh, very baby level, if that makes sense. So after that, uh, this is actually, let's do this. We've got Bulugh al-Maram min adillatil ahkam. This is by Ibn Hajar. Again, um, I'm going over this book while watching videos so remember when you study these books it's important that you have a teacher uh, watch videos online do programs online and have the physical book so that you can annotate make notes and whatnot of course this is the book that i generally believe if you're very new to the dean and you need something light something very interesting the seal nectar by safi rahman al-mubarak puri rahimahullah uh, ta'ala um, as you can see it's a very very good book i always uh, talk about this book in uh, previous videos as well. It talks about the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi I really recommend that you guys get this version of the book because it's got nice little pictures. So if you're very new into the deen and you find it hard to concentrate and stuff like that, you probably don't want to go over books that don't have any images. Uh, this is, of course, Qisasul Anbiya. It is by Ibn Kathir. It's taken by Al-Bidaya Wal Nihaya. Uh, he's got a whole book of um, basically everything from the time of Adam Alayhi uh, I would actually recommend if you're new new into the deen or you're a river to get this book but get the one with the images so it's exactly like this one but this is about all of the the stories of the prophets all the from adam salam, all the way till the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh this is the book i'm going over i'm trying to memorize it in the next 30 days inshallah uh, tafsir al uh, i'm going to be talking more about this book inshallah in the upcoming vlogs so i'm just going to keep this to the side uh we've got adab al mufrad of course this is the hadith uh, it's a collection taken by bukhari of course and and this one uh, again go over it with the teacher there is all these little playlists I'm going to be putting in the description below please go over them and all of these books inshallah they'll be down there in the description below if you want to buy them of course this is sick uh, anyone who's watching this that is Christian please 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 get this book this is from Ahmed Didat he's actually the teacher of Dr. Zaki Naik and uh, this is the choice and he talks about the differences between Islam and Christianity and it's a very 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 good book please guys do watch it uh, watch their videos and go and um, check the book out as well. Of course, Adawa Dawa, extremely, extremely important book. I would say, uh, actually, if you're a pretty much like a beginner, do you get this book? It's pretty nice to read. A lot of evidences. This is by Ibn Al Qayyum, the student of Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimahullah. And uh, it talks about the diseases of the heart. For example, if you're struggling with uh, lowering your gaze, if you're struggling with, um, you know, music and all these other sins, Ibn al Qayyim talks about all of these problems and how to get rid of it from a practical manner by bringing evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. Sorry, guys, I know this video is going to be super long, but uh, of course, we've got Kitab al Tawheed by uh, Sheikh Muhammad Ibn al Abdul Wahhab. Very, very, very important book. Allah Azza wa Jal says, That Allah has sent down every single prophet with the message of what to tell people to any abdullah worship allah azawajal alone and do not associate any partners to allah azawajal and of course we know allah azawajal there is nothing like him of course allah azawajal says in surah ikhlas 
قل هو الله احد say he is Allah the one and only Allah who summed لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد there isn't anything like Allah Azza wa Jal we do not ascribe partners to Allah Azza wa Jal we do not say Allah has a wife Allah has children um, you know Allah has this that equals to him no we worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone and we believe in his names and his attributes and we only worship him alone as well we don't just believe in him we also worship him alone of course we know for example uh, a lot of the people during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, what happened is that the Kufar of Quraysh they actually did believe in uh, Tawheed uh, al rububiyyah they didn't have a problem with that they did believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that created the heavens and the earth وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ لَا اللَّهِ قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ so if you were to ask the Kufar of Quraysh if you were to ask these people these disbelievers who is the one that created the heavens and the earth they will say yes Allah it was Allah so they believed it was Allah Azza wa Jal but what did they do they used to worship idols and they used to say this idol is gonna get me closer to Allah so when it came to the Tawheed al-Uluhiyya leaving the worship only for Allah Azza wa Jal they didn't do that of course um so all these books, as you can see, extremely, extremely important because monotheism, Tawheed, is the fundamentals of our religion. Of course, we've got Uthul Thalatha. Uh, this is the Shah the, uh, by Shah Saleh ibn al uh, We've got Qawaid al-Arba'a. As you can see, very important, the four principles of shirk. Uh, it's a very easy book, actually, it's pretty small. So I would say, if you're a beginner, please do go over this as well. Uh, of course, we've got um, Kashfa Shubuhat. So, so Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Abdul Wahhab, he actually has written Kitab al-Tawheed. And as far as I know, he's then uh, talked about Kashfa Shubuhat to remove uh, the doubts. So, of course, when he's written the uh, book of monotheism, some people tried to basically argue with him. He wrote Kashfa Shubuhat to uh, talk about uh, those uh, doubts and uh, he completely destroyed them. Uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. Of course, we've got Aqeedatul Wasitiya. Again, go over this uh, with your teachers. I've gone over it with some teachers. I will be putting all of the links down there in the description below. This is written by Ibn Taymiyyah. Very, very important. It's basically the beliefs of the Muslims who we believe in. Uh, okay, so uh, at Tuba Nabawi, this is by Ibn Al Qayyim. Very interesting book. I actually say, if you're a beginner, get this, especially the medical students who are watching this. Uh, this is actually about the medicine that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used. And uh, of course, we know um, there's many hadiths, for example, Fil Habbat is Sauda, Shifa Umin Kulli Da in Illa Sam. All of this is mentioned here about the black seed. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ashifa Ufi Thalatha, Sharbati Asalin, Wa Sharbati Mihjam, Wa Kayati Narin, Wa Anha Ummati Anil Kayati. And, it, and the list goes on and on and on. Of course, he also used to uh, make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal by saying, "Imsah al Bas, Rabb al Nas, biyadi kashifa la kashifa lahu illa." And I'm looking at my camera. I'm like, "Wow, I've been talking for so long. This vlog is going to be super long." But Subhanallah, I think it's very important. Uh, Timeless seeds of advice. Very, very good book for beginners. Although I will say there are a couple of things in these books that are not hundred percent accurate. Some of the statements uh, of the Salaf al Saleh, uh, but it's a very nice uh, book for you to read. Uh, so I would highly recommend it. Again, I'm not getting paid for any of this. I'm not getting sponsored by these guys. The only reason I'm telling you this is because I've studied these books I've read them and I've gone over them the majority of them with the teachers uh, so it's very very important um, that you uh, go over some of these books and it's only because you guys asked me to as well uh, this is a very good book actually Minhaj al-Muslim is by Abu Bakr Jabir al-Jazair he actually used to be uh, Rahimahullah he used to be um, one of the teachers at the um, Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's for beginners, it's for you to know what is the belief uh, What is your aqeedah, what do, you, what do we believe in as Muslims And of course the evidences from the Quran and Sunnah And also all of the basic things you need to know as a Muslim That are very important, uh, they're all mentioned here uh, As you can see two volumes Some of these books will take you a long time to read But my advice would be if you do spend maybe half an hour every single day On reading books, it's very important uh, This is a book I've been going over uh, very recently It's uh, Sharha Sunnah by Imam Barbahari, Rahimahullah, and it's uh, the Sharh of uh, Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, the explanation, Hafidahullah uh, Ta'ala. Yeah, that's it. These are my Islamic books. I've gone over other books. Uh, however, I don't have physical copies. Recently, I decided that it's better to also have the physical copies rather than just reading ebooks. So, in terms of ebooks, I used to read a lot of ebooks, but uh, it's better to have the physical copy. Only problem with the physical copies, a lot of these are very heavy to keep in your house, and sometimes the books are kind of expensive. But other than that, 
you know, it's better to have these books because at the end of the day, this is knowledge karim that's going to save you on the day of judgment. And the uh, last thing is these are some of the books that I've read. I don't really want to talk about them. Only reason being is the reason why I read these books about productivity, self whatever uh, about money and whatnot don't get me wrong they're good but at the end of the day every single thing that you guys need to know is written in all of these books Allah has said in the Quran that in the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of examples so you don't need any other examples except the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam look at his biography look at every single thing he did if you want to be a great leader if you want to be a great father if you want to be a great husband if you want to be a great anything look at the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when i read all of these productivity books i realized everything that they've been waffling about is literally taken from all of these books that were written way 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 earlier than all of these books so at the end of the day honestly it's good to uh know all sorts of knowledge that is beneficial of course uh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafia oh allah give me beneficial knowledge because not every knowledge is beneficial and some of these books although they do have benefit in it uh there is benefit there are ways that you can use your time by reading books such as this ones that went over so uh sorry guys i know this took uh, a huge portion of the vlog but i know uh, you guys have been asking and you're very very um interested in this i need to go sleep but one last thing i want to say before i go sleep is i want to say that what's very important is not just buying these books and a lot of people just buy these books they have them displayed but one uh they don't understand these books they don't memorize these books they don't know the evidences and more importantly they don't apply it in their daily lives and of course we know that knowledge can be a hujja can be a proof for you or against you so it's very important that you uh use this book so that you can educate yourself and apply it and teach that knowledge to other people um sorry guys i tried to speak as fast as i could but uh, see you guys soon inshallah وَإِن كُنتُم فِي رَيْبٍ مِّمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَى عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّثْلِهِ وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُم مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنتُمْ صَادِقِينَ leaving the house super tired i went to sleep from uh, 12 to 4 and then from like 5 30 just about 8 30 so go a good night seven hours sleep because it's broken you're a bit tired but anyway just got up put my clothes on and then i'm um, heading to the uni right now the plan is just to revise the entire day because usually what i do is uh, i'll literally be going to the gym get a nice little workout early in the morning but uh, not for today we're just heading straight to uni just gonna study whole day medicine and go over my book also the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that i wanted to share is the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Ramadan, that when the month of ramadan comes in the gates of the heavens are opened up the gates of the hellfire are closed and that the um the big devils they're chained up so it's very important that you make the most out of this i gotta walk for maybe about 25 minutes so i get my little morning walk out of the way just gonna put my airpods on as usual either listen to some quran or usually i just like to listen to some lectures So just editing for about two hours and I'm taking a break, come to the prayer room. Let me see who's here. I'm just going to this dodgy place. Anyway, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, actually, this is hadith Qudsi, where Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna Allah yaqul ya ibn Adam, ikfini awwal al-nahari bi arba'i raka'atin also son of Adam, suffice me with four cycles of prayer every morning and I will suffice you for the rest of the day. Some of the scholars have interpreted this hadith 
has been for a calf to her prayer so make sure you pray your do her prayer especially in ramadan is something that the prophet sallallahu used to do regularly Back from the hall. Now it's time to do my book. Yes, Adrian. This guy's too I'm tired, man. I'm tired. Easy work, brother. Let's go. Let's go. We got this. Look at the view. That's what we got for the view. It's not bad, isn't it? It's a hospital. All right, listen guys, we were meant to be studying, but as you can see, um, me and Adrian spent a whole hour talking about lifestyle and some very interesting, mad conversation, completely halal. But I wanted to give a random reminder which came to my mind. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورُ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ وَالْجَهَلِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ أَنْ يَدَعَ تُعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Whoever doesn't need idle speech, and speech that you know gossiping and all sorts of other stuff then Allah is not in need of them leaving the food and the drink because when you're fasting it's not just the food and the drink it's controlling your behavior controlling your gaze controlling what comes out of your mouth uh, obviously everything we talked about was halal anyway but it was super interesting so we need a break one hour we're gonna study yeah I can't let's go I think uh, you guys have seen enough Adrian for this vlog. He was literally there a whole day since yesterday, and we spent the whole day together. Got a little bit of work done, but too much talking. Uh, but good uh, talk, good talk. very good talk, very beneficial, alhamdulillah. And uh, now we're just gonna go home and uh, eat iftar because there's like less than an hour left. Look at these trees. Subhanallah. All right, guys, just came back home and obviously we ate iftar with the family. And now, as usual, uh, we're just going to be chilling. So that's basically the end of the day. Obviously, in like an hour-ish, we need to go and pray um, Tarawih. So before that, I'm just going to rest for a bit, read some books, relax. I need to start editing this vlog up. Uh, but other than that, that's basically the day in the life. It starts all the way from... Uh, Harawi last night and that's the first day of Ramadan it's gone it's done and um, that's why you want to make the most out of it because before you know where the month is going to be gone so I hope you guys took a lot of benefits from this vlog because I know there was a lot of you know book reviews there's a lot of reminders here and there but pretty 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 productive day I'd say uh, I was very happy with it everything alhamdulillah was good and uh, other than that I'll see you guys in the next vlog inshallah uh, take care and uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.